Hello, this is Brandon Knapp, and I'm going to be reading a Laura Boldwig X Male Reader story uh, on Wattpad by uh, Anime Freak 1988. Uh, I will link. Try to remind myself to link the story in the description below if you want to read for it, read it yourself because it's basically a cross reader between uh, it's a cross reader between Laura Boldwig from Infinite Shadows and the male reader. And uh, apparently there's a warning for mature content, so be do be aware. And um, all right, here we go. Chapter 1. Lara Bodewig. Lara woke up screaming because of her dream. She constantly had nightmares due to the exper experiments that had been done on her so she could use an IS unit. Thankfully, Charlotte, who uh, was her roommate and was able was always there to comfort her, so this is the beginning of her life with the friends she had made and the hardships they had gone through. Upon waking up screaming, Laura was embraced by her roommate Charlotte, trying to calm her down. After a few minutes, she calmed down enough to realize that she wasn't in her dream anymore. Thanks, Charlotte, Laura said to Charlotte while getting her bearing back. Anytime, Cherry, uh, Charlotte said. What time is it? Uh, by the way, in uh, context, Laura is... A rep representative contender from Germany, um, while Charlotte is the one, is a representative contender from France. So, so you just keep that in mind that when you hear, if I say it in a way that doesn't make sense for how an American, I suppose, would read it, it's because it's just be, it's because of her German accent. So that's why, um, if it doesn't sound like it how it's spelled, that's because it's a German accent or an attempt, I guess. What time is it? Laura asked while looking around to see where the alarm clock was at. It's just three minutes before the alarm goes off to get up, Charlotte says. Well, it's time to wake up in the rest, I suppose, Laura said, slowly getting out of her bed. Laura slowly got her unif her school uniform on as Charlotte went to take a shower. While, while Charlotte was in the shower, Laura made breakfast for the two. She had some sausage and eggs made and put on a plate for her and... Charlotte, by the time Charlotte came out, dressed from her shower. They sat down at a small table in their room and ate their breakfast. After they were done eating, they put their dishes in the dishwasher and left to head to their class. classes. Laura spaced out a little on the way to class, feeling that something was going to be different about today compared to the usual usual day she had. When they got to, to class, they took their sheets and waited for Miss Yamada to start class. Class, I have some news. We are getting another student today, Miss Yamada said. Everyone just had a look of shock on their face because they were getting so many new transfers lately to the school. I would like you to meet Brandon Knapp, Miss Yamada said as you entered the classroom. Everyone exclaimed with shocked looks as you came since you were a boy. The only boy to ever control an IS unit was Ichika Odumura, so, this was a, so it was a shock to see another male student. He slowly bowed to the class. My name is Brandon Knapp. Pleased to meet you all. I hope you all can become friends, he said while looking at everyone with their faces. Can you please take a seat by Miss or, or Ichika Odumura, Mr. Knapp? Mr. Yamada said. You bow and walk to the desk that, appointed you to you, that was appointed to you and sat down. You were a little nervous because everyone kept looking at you, but decided to give your full attention to Miss Yamada as she explained what, about what they were to go over today in class. You couldn't help but notice the stare of a pla of a pla of a girl of a girl that had a platinum hair and wore an eye patch over one of her eyes. You hope it didn't mean trouble coming on your way on the first day of school. Oh, shit. Okay. Sorry. Followed. A threat? Uh, this is chapter two, by the way. You get up from your seat once class is over and start putting your books away. You quickly glanced around, getting the feeling that you were being watched closely by someone, and saw the girl with platinum hair and eye patch staring at you intensely. You decided it was time to go into a defensive position and watch your back carefully. You pick up your bag and head out of the classroom. You slowly make your way back to your room when the intercom comes on and asks that you report to the administration office. You change directions and head towards the administration office uh, to find out uh, what was going on on your way to the office. You still had the feeling that someone was watching you and glanced carefully. 
over your shoulder without giving yourself away and saw the corner of your eye that platinum haired girl was on your tail you get to the office going in and go in knowing that the girl wouldn't follow you in without having to give herself away as you enter the office the receptionist points you to to a door to go through you go through the door and see that miss oyenmora is sitting on the other side of a desk and it looks like she's been expecting you please sit down mr knapp oyenmora says you sit down hoping that you haven't done anything wrong yet I'll be having I will be having you move to the room to share with my younger brother Ichika Oedmora. As you can guess, he is my younger brother. I think it'd be good for you to get to know him and his friends. I hope you can make some friend, new friends and enjoy your time here. That is all for now. If you need anything, feel free to leave a message for me here at the at my office. You're dismissed, Miss Oedmora said. Says you nod your head and pick your bag back up. Once you pick up your bag, pick your bag back up. Ori Miller hands you a piece of paper with your room number on it. You look at it and head to your room. When you head out of the office, you catch a glimpse of the platinum hair girl again. She follows you to your room. When you unlock the door to your room and head in, your roommate doesn't seem to be in, so you grab the bed that isn't occupied. You set yourself down and prepare your area to your liking. You decide to take a nap until your roommate gets back. It doesn't take long for you to fall asleep. For now, you have put the platinum haired girl out of your mind. Oh boy. Had. Chapter 3. Meeting a roommate and figuring out the girl. I assume is what that says. I couldn't read it. Okay. You end up waking up from the sound of a lo of the lock and the door disengaging. You sit up and make your bed to at least give a good impression. You hear the door click ha handle click and the door swings open, revealing a guy standing there. He has a bag of groceries in his hand. Would you like some help with that, you ask? Sure, but I do have one question. Who are you and where is Tatanashi? Tatanashi. He asked, I'm Brandon Knapp. They had Tata, Tatanashi switched rooms and put me in here with put me in here with you, you said. You say, not knowing who Tatanashi is. Ah, uh, here. Can you take one of these and set it on the counter for me, he asked. You grab one of the bags and set it on the counter, waiting until he's done. He eventually gets the door shut and sets the bag he is holding on the counter. So you must be the other male that can use an IS unit. Glad to know that I'm not the only one here now. I'll introduce you to the girls that I hang out with here shortly, since they will be here soon. My name is Ichika, by the way, he says. I do have one question. There is a, this girl with platinum hair and an eye patch has been following me lately. Do you know who she is, you ask? Oh, that is Laura Boldwig. She doesn't mean you any harm. You're, you're an anomaly for using an IS unit since until me, only girls could use one. She is probably just curious, so she is watching you. You'll be seeing her soon, since she is one of my friends that are coming here, Ichika says. I can't help but feel like I've seen her somewhere before, you say. She is Germany rep Germany's representative. You have probably seen her on TV before, Ichika says. That makes sense, you say. Just as soon as you get done speaking, there came a knocking on the room door. Can you get that for me, please, Ichika says. Asks. Sure, you say. You get up and answer the door. When you uh, and answer the door, when you open the door, there are seven girls standing there. Um, hi, you say with surprise in your voice, seeing so many girls at once, at one time. Laura pushes her way to the front of the girls and looks you up and down clo closely, analyzing you. You step back, feeling intimidated, but she just steps closer to you. Laura, behave. He is my roommate. Ichika yells. You step aside so the girls could come into the room. You go to your bed and sit down. You pull an MP3 player and put your headphones on while watching everyone. All the girls are trying, are starting to try and get Ichika's attention. You realize though quickly that he does, he was, he was too dense to realize that the girls liked him. Uh, the one girl that wasn't trying to get his attention was Laura. She sat down on Ichika's bed and stared at you. After a few minutes, you got annoyed. You took your ear, but your headphones off, and decided it was time to say something. Not to sound rude, but do you need something? You ask her. You are Polish, Laura says. At this, everyone stopped what they were doing and watched. They have never seen anyone act like the act like act, Laura act like this towards anyone. Yes, why? You say and ask. You see Laura smile. I think you and me will get along greatly. Finally, someone I can talk to about my homeland that would fully understand how I feel. Laura says. You smile, realizing that she wasn't a threat. She, all she wanted was a friend that she could share whatever she wanted with that would understand how she felt. You knew that Laura and you were going to be best friends. And I'm going to go start chapter four, and then I'm probably going to stop at that point. Uh, okay. Profound friend and a cute girl to talk to. Everyone's, everyone and you had a great day chatting and hanging out. It didn't seem very long before it got late, and everyone had to head back to their rooms. 
You did learn that Charlotte and Lara's room was right next to yours and Ichika's. Before everyone left, all the girls hugged Ichika, but Lara stayed in front of you, like she was expecting something from you. It finally dawned on you that she was waiting for a hug, which was a natural thing for friends where she came from. She so nervously hold your arms down, and she was quick to give you a hug. It felt amazing being to be hugged by a girl for once, instead of them always rejecting you and acting like you didn't exist. It wasn't your looks that uh, made girls reject you, but your reject you, but your personality. Usually, you're nothing but a loner and preferred it that way. You still didn't know, still didn't know why she had an eye patch, but you weren't going to risk offending the first girl to treat you like a friend in a disrespectful manner. You figured it was something that she would tell you on her own time if she wanted to. After everyone left, you, you and each of decided to get ready for bed since Charlotte had the idea of going on a trip to the beach. It was something that came up around the end of July every year, and you don't want to seem like an outcast, so you decided to join them. You climb in, into your bed when Ichika decides to talk. So what did you think of the girls, Ichika asked? They are great to be around and hang around, hang out with, especially Lara, you say. Oh, do you like her, Ichika asked? I won't lie. I do find her cute. I still want to get to know her better, though. I don't know if I'd want her to be my girlfriend, but at least for now, I want to be friends with her, you say. Just keep in mind, she is, just keep in mind, she is an aggressive type usually, Ichika says. I will do just that. Well, I think we should get some rest. Tomorrow seems like it's going to be a busy day, you say. You fall asleep quickly. You're still out when Ichika shook you awake. You open your eyes and realize it was early in the morning. You decided to take a shower uh, while Ichika made breakfast. It felt weird that another guy was making breakfast, but you decided not to question it. You're curious on what kind of food they had in Japan since you hadn't eaten many Japanese dishes. You get dressed once you are done with your shower and sit down at the table just as Ichika laid a plate on the table with food on it. It's just egg, toast, eggs, and ham with a salad on the side, Ichika says. You're expecting something different, but weren't surprised by the breakfast being a traditional dish that was common in most countries. You ate everything that was there and quickly washed your dishes. You had just finished cleaning the dishes when there came, when there came a knock on the, do on the room door. You answer the door and see the girls with all their stuff and dressed in their swimsuits for the beach. Good thing you and Lara each had already changed into your swimsuits. You see Lara in a nice swimsuit. It was a dark purple two-piece swimsuit having a black frill on it. You blush a little when she catches you looking at her. Um, I take it everyone is ready to go, you ask? Yes, all the girls said at once. You need to go grab your stuff and head out to the tram that that will take everyone to the beach. You couldn't get you couldn't get the image of Lara out of your mind. All right, maybe one more part chapter. Uh, okay. Beach trip, chapter five. Everyone gets to the tram station. You were kind of nervous, but you because you and each were the only got two guys there, and all the girls that were there were in their bikinis. You did notice that Lara stayed by your side instead of Ichika's, though. The other girls seemed happy, though, that Lara wasn't trying to get Ichika's attention. Typical. When everyone got in the tram car, Lara sat in the seat with you. She seemed to be a little tired, but that didn't surprise anyone since everyone had to get up way earlier than usual. It was a two-hour trip to get there by the tram, so everyone settled in. Some of the girls uh, uh, f actually fell asleep quickly. You saw Lara nodding off, and it looked like she was going to fall into the aisle between the seats. You grabbed her to keep her from falling. She didn't respond, letting you know she was out like a light. You braced her against you, like she could so uh, you, uh, against you, so she could sleep uh, comfortably. Each girl noticed the whole thing and winked at you. You just nodded your head back and relaxed. You pull out your MP3 player and listen to music for the ride while gazing out the window. Eventually, the train stopped outside of the tr station for the beach. You lightly shake Lara and she starts screaming. Charlotte comes over and comforts Lara, getting her to calm down. Sorry, Brandon. She still has nightmares from experiments that were done on her, Charlotte says, expl uh, says explaining. You're confused, but nod your head in acknowledgement. Lara looks at you with an embarrassed look on her face. It's all right. You don't have to explain, ab explain about it to me, you say, trying to set her mind at ease. Lara starts swallowing from the memories where Charlotte and anyone else can do anything. You grab Lara and let her cry your herself out on your shoulders. You help her calm down and she wipes her tears away. S -s Sorry, she stammers. It's all right. You are safe now. Nothing like that will ever happen to you again, I promise, you say. Everyone had a shocked look on their face. Look on their face, except Ichika. No one else knew that you liked Lara. Even the girls that weren't your friends looked disappointed, but no one said anything. Lara smiled at you, but didn't catch the true meaning behind your words. Everyone went went back to the, gather their things and started filing off the tram. Once everyone was assembled, Miss Orimura gave orders that everyone was free until five in the afternoon. They had to be back at the station by then. 
You picked up your stuff and followed the girls and each chick out with Lara remaining by your side. You looked at Lara to see how she was doing and noticed she had a worried look on her face. You grab her hand. Don't worry. I'm right here. I won't leave your side, okay? Just relax and have fun, you say. Lara nods her head and too surprised. She doesn't even doesn't try to break free from your grip. Instead, she holds your hand even tighter. You can feel the strength in her grip and though, and thought she must be really strong to have that hard of a grip. Eventually, you reach a huge water slide. You pull Lara with you towards it. Come on, let's go on the water slide. It's meant for two people to go down together, you say. You see her smile and shake her head in acknowledgement. You both reach the top after about five minutes walking, waiting in line. Uh, the instructor has Lara sit down first with you climbing in behind her. You wrap your arms around her tightly and hold on as the instructor pushes you guys forwards. Lara starts laughing and having fun once you guys reach the bottom. Uh, she turns around the smile. Let's do, go do some more stuff, Lara says happily. You head, both head to the main pool and decide to have a diving contest. You didn't go to the highest point, but Lara did outshow you. You both laugh and have and have fun playing in the pool. You're happy that you got to spend time with her. When it gets close to 4.30, you both head back, head on back to the tram. Everyone gets there a little bit after you there get to get there and are happy to see both of you enjoying the time spent together. Lara still had not hadn't realized yet that you liked her, but she seemed to have fun and is all that mattered to you. Once everyone was back and back on the tram, the tram took everyone to a shrine. The shrine was a very religious place, and people often made wishes there, and you decided to make a wish, and also and saw, also saw Lara make a wish. Your wish that Lara would end up falling in love with you. What you didn't know was that Lara had the same wish that you would fall in love with her. Neither of you realized what the other was thinking, but neither of you would actually say anything to each other either. Eventually, after everyone had a chance of making a wish and eating dinner at the shrine, you all head back to the tram for the ride back to the academy. You eventually reach the academy. Both you and Ichika say goodbye to the girls with you. With you once again end up ending up hugging Lara. You and Ichika made it back to your room. So, how was your day spending it with Lara? Ichika asked you. It was wonderful. I just wish it could have lasted longer. You say. You were gonna. You gonna tell me what your wish was? Ichika asked, that, my friend, is a secret. I just All hope right, that one day six. it comes true, you said. Confused attack. Ichika does not just head that he understands. You end up being woken up from someone pouncing on you. You open your eyes and see Lara. Your eyes get wide with her already off being asleep, having an image of Lara. What the hell is this, you ask? Well, Ichika said you wouldn't, you would, you wouldn't wake up, so I would tackle you. <laughs> Lara said cheerfully while smiling. You grab and kiss her out of nowhere. Uh, and hear gasps from multiple people in the room. You look around and notice all the girls were there in the room. When you look back at Lara, you see her blushing and acting nervous. I'm sorry, I don't know why I did that, you say nervously. You, heard, you had heard that Lara could be aggressive and violent sometimes and hoped that she didn't smack you. You flinched when she ra- went, sat backwards and wrapped the sheets around her. The other girls noticed that you flinched and didn't budge to intervene because Ichika raised his hand up to stop them. It seemed the time had stopped. That time had stopped, and everyone just looked, stood there, watching you and Lara. All of a sudden, Lara giggled and smiled at you. She jumped. She suddenly jumped and you uh, at you and hugged you. Everyone let out a sigh of relief as things slowly went back to normal. You and Lara ended up wrestling with each other before she managed to pin you down to where you couldn't move. You are mine, Lara said loudly. I'll always be here as long as you want me to. You exclaimed. She got off to- the top of you and so and snuggled up close to you while smiling. You aren't sure what uh, what all just happened, but you decided that if it was going co- it was causing her to fall in love with you, that you didn't mind it. After a while, Ichika finished cooking and everyone sat down to eat. No one made it official, but seemed but it seemed that you and Lara was together. You and smiled and laughed with the jokes Lara said and enjoyed your time with her. Everything was going good when all of a sudden an alarm start, started sounding throughout the school. Everyone with the personal IES unit, please report to the command center. All other students, please file out of your rooms and into the bunkers underground. There is an attack on the academy. These instructions will repeat, you heard what sounded like Miss Oromo's voice over the intercom. Everyone uh, everyone looks at each other and nods while ha- having their IS, IS units appear. Everyone looked at your, your unit as it appeared. Your unit had two main cannons attached in the shoulder areas, and in one hand was a gun, like a pistol, and the other hand held a seven-foot-long katana. Your machine was decked out in a dark magenta with metallic dark blue colors swirling around each other. Your gauntlets had spikes on them, making it look foreboding and intimidating. Once everyone's IS unit was out, each could hit a switch, and the wall that led to outside slid upwards, opening for quick maneuvering to get to the command center quickly. 
you'll you all take off take off in flight quickly and make your way to the command center. Uh, pause for video. Chapter seven: The battle slash time to shine or be an idiot. Everyone reaches the command center quickly. Miss Oromara is already waiting there for you and the gang. Uh, listen up, Phantom Task is back, and this time they are they, they have a special weapon. I hate to announce this in front of everyone, and it's going to shock you, but uh, Ichika, but Madoka Oyumura, who is Ichika's twin sister, is after Ichika. She is our primary target. I want her captured. She is silent. She is silent Zephyr. If we can capture her, we might be able to get some vital information from her. All right, everyone, move out. Miss Oyumura says. Everyone immediately takes off. You went straight for Madoka. You knew what IUS unit it was. Ichika tried to have you stand down, but you ignored him. You're focusing on capturing her. Laura saw this and decided to help you. It was going to be a, to be a to be put to a te to test on what the limits of your IUS could do. You pull out your blade and gun. You engage Madoka quickly, thinking if you caught her off guard, it would give you an advantage. Just as you swung, you swung your sword to hit her, Madoka immediately spun around and her blade connected with yours, causing the blades to lock together. Madoka grabbed you with her other hand, tossing you into the ground. It stunned you to where you couldn't move your body. You could see Laura engage Madoka and watch as they clashed again and again. You could see the sparks from even, uh, even from the ground as their blades connected each time. When you're finally able to move, you could see that Laura's action, actions were slowing down from her stamina wearing out. All of a sudden, Madoka managed to land a major hit, causing Laura to go off balance and sending her backwards a good distance. Madoka raised her left hand while with it holding a gun. Laura was stunned really good to where she couldn't move. Madoka was about to pull the trigger when he shot up, tor up tor tor uh, to towards and just managed to get in front of Laura as just as Madoka fired. The fire went right through you. You coughed up blood as your sight started to black out. You could see Ichika land a successful hit on Madoka before your vision faded out, blacked out. After the battle, everyone watched from the watching, watched from the watching post as the medical staff was working on saving you. Um, I have something to tell you all, especially you, Laura. Brandon is in love with you, Laura. He did what he did trying to save you. I promised him that I wouldn't say anything, but I think this is important. Ichika says. Everyone just looks in shock at looks in shock at the news. Ichika walks away from everyone with his head hung in shame for breaking a promise. And then the girls try stopping him. Everyone looks at Laura once Ichika is gone and sees tears streaming from her face. Charlotte was about to say something when Laura turns and runs. Laura, wait! Charlotte ye Charlotte yells. Laura ignores everyone and just keeps on running. Should we go after her? Hokey asks. That wouldn't be wise because besides, you won't find her unless she wants to be found. I know where she probably went. Leave everything to me. Just watch over Brandon, Tatanashi says before going to find Lara. Everyone, all anyone could do is wait and just make sure they came out of this all right. Chapter 8. Mutual Feelings. Tatanashi started looking for Lara. She stood. She looked in the cafeteria in Lara's bedroom, not finding her in either. She stopped and thought about the one place Lara would go when wanting to be alone, and, real, and, and realized just where Lara had gone to. Tatanashi stepped outside and then gauged her IS unit since her since hers hadn't taken severe damage and flew up to the highest point of the IS Academy. Lara was sitting there, just out looking out over the town, with tears still slightly streaming down her face. Tatanashi approached slowly and sat down next to Laura. Laura didn't even acknowledge her. So what are you thinking? Tatanashi asked. I'm hurt that Brandon never said anything, Laura says. Do you love him? Tatanashi asked. Yes, I just wished he had said something to me. He's the first that guy that I can share anything with, Laura says. So tell him. I think you'll get a positive response from him, Tatanashi says. I don't know how to. This is the first time I've, I've heard of a guy loving me, Lara says. Just tell him straight that you love him, Tatanashi says. Uh, uh, all right, Lara says. Stammer's trying to get her emotions under control. Come back with me, Tatanashi asked. Yes, I will, Lara's, Lara says. Tatanashi picks Lara up and carries her down to a set of doors leading inside. Tatanashi leads the way with Lara falling behind her. Eventually, they reach the medical bay. And Lara puts on a smile before they enter. As soon as they enter, everyone turns to look at them. How is he doing? Lara asks. He was all right. The doctors managed to fix him, but it will be a slow process for his body to fully heal, Hokey says. Can I see him? Lara asks. 
Yes, I made special clearance for you to be able to go in, Miss Orimura says from behind them. Lara walks into the room and holds your hand in hers. You sense that something is touching your hand and look up to see Lara. Lara, I'm sorry, you say. All of a sudden, Lara bends down and kisses you. What are you doing, you ask? Well, I, well, I was told that you loved me. I too, to be honest, I love you too, Lara says with tears streaming running on her face. Reach up and slowly wipe away your tears. Everyone's just watching the two of you from behind the closet in the observation bay. You have no idea they could, that they could see. You slowly bring Lara's face down to yours again and kiss her deeply. Get a room, you two. You hear, you hear Reen's voice over an in intercom. You blow flush deeply. Miss Orimura comes into the room. If you two want, I can put you both in the same room. I can have Charlotte move in with each guy. They have shared a room before, Miss Orimura says. I would like that. What about how about you, Lara? She said you ask, say. Lara just nods her head yes. That's settled then. I've I'll have the I'll have the exchange done by dinner time. Oh, you are free to move about in a wheelchair for the next two weeks until your wounds have sufficiently healed. Good luck, you two, Miss Ormore says as she leaves. I couldn't believe that not only Laura did tell you that she loved you, but that you two would be together in the same room. It was like a dream come true. Chapter nine. This is a uh, they, this is a short chapter called Quality Time. You and Lara eventually made it to your, make it to your new room. You see that your stuff has already been moved in. Lara helps you onto your bed to where you're sitting up, or to where you're sitting up. You couldn't help but look at her. I do have a question for you, Lara. Uh, for you, you say to Lara, "What is it?" Lara says, uh, uh, "Asks." Why do you wear an eye patch? You ask. Lara sighs. You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. I was just curious, is all. Lara, re you say. Lara reaches up and removes the eye patch, revealing an eye that has that was gold in colored, golden colored. I was experimented on. The people that raised raised me wanted me to make me more compatible with the IS unit. I went through hell in the experiments. As a result, I ended up with this eye to help enhance me for the IS unit. Most peop people freak out when they see my eye, so I just keep it covered, Lara explains. You hold your arms out to her, seeing her start to tear from the memories of what was done to her. She graciously accepts the hug from you. After the hug, Lara stands up, back up. Shall I make dinner for us? Lara asks. That would be wonderful, you say with a smile on your face. It takes almost an, hour, almost an hour for Lara to cook, but once she was done, she laid everything on the table. She comes and carries you to the chair at the table. You both sit down and eat while smiling at each other. It was romantic sitting there uh, eating with the most beautiful girl in the world to you. After dinner was over, Lara carried you back to your bed. Before she could walk away, you grab her hand and pull her down onto the bed next to you. You kiss her deeply. She opened her mouth, allowing you to stick your tongue inside. You enjoyed the sweet taste of the inside of her mouth. You both kiss each other for a while before quitting and gasping for air. She lay next to you and cuddled up. Lay next to you and cuddled up against you. You both lay there enjoying the moment. Enjoying the moment before you both fall asleep with her. With her laying your head on your chest. Huh. Excuse me. All right. Chapter ten. Lara's older sister? Question mark. You wake up with Lara curled up next to you. You slowly rub your back, causing her, rub her back, causing her to wake up, moaning. Once she was awake, fully awake, she looks up at you and kisses you. You both get up and start and decide to get dressed for the day. Lara just started to take off her clothes off when you asked why she didn't take the partition out of the wall to get dressed. That would be silly. I've decided to make me feel right. right. Lara says, it took you a minute to understand what she had just said. What? You say loudly in shock. What's wrong? What's wrong? Lara asks. Nothing is wrong. You just caught me off guard with that statement is all. Lara smiles and you couldn't help but think she was the most beautiful girl that you had seen. You grab Lara by the shoulders and drag her down next to you on your bed with only being in undergarments for both of you. You start making out with Lara when the girl door all of a sudden flies open to the room with each again the girl standing there with a serious dark look on their face like something was wrong. How indecent, all the girls shout when they see you and Lara on your bed with just your undergarments on. You look at over at Ichika. What's wrong, man? You ask while trying not to be embarrassed. We have a visitor. She claims to be related to Lara and here's to take, is here to take her with her, Ichika says. Why is she here now? Lara seems to ask herself. Do you know the person, Lara? You ask. She is my elder sister, Lara says with a dark look on her face. Lara instantly gets the rest of her clothes on and summons her IS unit. You get dressed and looks at, look at other you took it for your orders. Everyone summon your IS units. If each, if Lara's summoning hers, then we can assume that this isn't going to be pretty. Each get orders. 
Everyone summons their RDX units just as the alarms count came on the speakers. Y'all instantly follow Lara as she takes off. Lara heads right outside into the air, and y'all follow her. Just as you reach the outside, you all see the girl with her RDX unit. Miss Ormore's voice comes out on, comes on the intercom of everyone's RDX unit. Lara, it's time to fish your parts, Lara. Everyone is in aid of support is is to aid and support of Lara. She got through the barrier, and we are not sure how or what her RDX unit unit's power is. Keep your guard up, everyone. Staff is on their way now to aid support, but remember, this is Lara's battle. You are in command, Lara. Each guy, you're the team sub commander, Miss Ormore said over everyone's intercom. Acknowledged, everyone said. You fought up next to, next to Lara, but stayed a little behind to give Lara some maneuvering room if she needed it. Why are you here, Chloe? Lara asked the girl. I came here to talk. I do not wish to fight with any of you. I am in my IS unit, just in case I was attacked, the girl said. All right, follow me then, and the rest of you, uh, rest of you are to surround us for support, Lara commanded. Lara and you lead the way to the docking hangar for the IS units with the girl right behind you. Once everyone was inside the hangar, the girl disengaged her IS unit. Everyone did, else did the same. You now managed to see the girl's full features. She had platinum hair, just like Lara, but she was an in, but it was about an inch shorter and seemed to have an elegant aura around her. So why why has my older sister decided to show up now? Lara asked. I wish to ask you, make you an offer that you can't refuse. In doing so, though, I wish protection by the academy. I'm afraid that Phantom Task is hunting me. And as for everyone else, let me introduce myself. My name is Chloe Chronicle, the girl said. Mr. Ormore answers the hangar. Very well. We will grant you protection, but you also mu but you must enroll as a student and do studies just like everyone else. Do you, t do you agree to this, Miss Ormore asked Chloe. Yes, ma'am, Chloe, Chloe says. I know that you were at one point working with Tabane Shinonono. What happened with that, Miss Ormore asked. Miss Shinonono told me she couldn't just protect me just by herself, so she told me to come here knowing that I would be protected, Chloe says. So what is it you want with me? With, with me, Laura asks. I wish to start over and hopefully be sisters like we are supposed to be. You are my only family, and I know the way I treated you to pass was wrong, Laura. Uh, Chloe says. Very well, Miss Orimura. Uh, can, can can Chloe share the room with both me and and Brandon? She can sleep in a bed that was meant vent for me, and if. Brandon's all right with it. I can share the bed with him, Laura says and asks. That's fine with me, but know this. You and Brandon will be responsible for her. Is that all right with you, Brandon? Miss Orimar says and asks. That's fine by me, you say. All of a sudden, Chloe's standing in front of you as if she was always there. It started you seeing someone move that quick as to not catch the movement. Chloe starts examining you closely by lifting up your arm and looking closely at your muscles and poking around your body. Um, What are you doing, you ask? I just want to see what your body is like. I want to know if you are strong enough to be the man my sister chooses to marry, Chloe says. Everyone laughs as you get embarrassed by Chloe's remark. Sorry about that. My sister likes to examine everything she sees, Laura says. You just shrug your shoulders like it didn't matter to you. After Chapter everyone 11. had settled down, you helped help Question Laura mark? get her sister to the room. You were and admiring and child in. Chloe's child Chloe like, like a child, child son. She jumps off the bed, the bed you at you, kind of catching you by surprise. You just you try to reach no to catch her in time, but fail, and she hits you to where you fall backwards onto the bed. Chloe all of a sudden jumps up and hugs her sister. Laura stiffens from not knowing how to react. She didn't know her sister had a childish side to her. Laura wouldn't let go of Chloe wouldn't let go of, of Laura, and Laura looked at you as, as if saying, "Help me out here." You walk over and grab Chloe, freeing Laura from her. Chloe eventually calms down. Shall I show you around the school? You ask Laura. Go ahead. I will stay here and continue setting up her side of the room. Laura says. You grab Chloe's hand. Come on, let's go and show you around the academy. You say. Chloe nods her head and follows you. You show her the area to go to for the bathroom first, so she'll be able to get there by herself. After the bathroom, you show her to the shower area and then the cafeteria. After the cafeteria, you show her where her class or classes were at. I can see why my sister likes you. You are kind and try to help others out. I'm happy that she found someone that is good to, for her. Please treat my sister well and cherish her. She has had a hard life, Chloe says. I will do my best to take care of her. I want to make her happy, you say. Since we are being honest with each other here, I will tell you the second reason why I'm here. All I ask is that you keep it quiet, Chloe says. If there's something I deem necessary, if it's something I deem necessary, then I will, you say. Fair enough. 
I'm here under the tents of trying to patch up things between Tavane and Chifuyu. Tavane wants to help Chifuyu ta to take down Phantom Task. Would you be willing now to keep it quiet and let me try to make it work between the two? Chloe says and asks. I remember hearing that the two were best friends at one time. I agreed to keep quiet. However, you owe me one for keeping it a secret from Lara, you say. Oh, my present for Lara I think will be sufficient, I believe. I plan on updating her IS units unit with some things to make it more powerful, Chloe says. You just spent the thought of it. Well, since we are done with the tour, do you want me to want to head back to the room, you ask? Sure, I want to see my sister again. I need to show her that I truly care and try to help her now. I honestly love my sister, but saw it was, it was at, uh, as a weakness all this time. I should really, I should, I really should apologize to, to, to her for treating her so badly. Chloe says, "You know, I back, head, nod your head, and, and that you understood." And the both of you head on back to to the room. All right, hold on. Chapter twelve: Lara proving herself. Lara versus Chloe. Both you and Chloe had, make it back to your room. When you enter the room, you see Lara has changed things around a little. She is relaxing on yours in her bed watching the te television. As soon as you came into the room with Lara, with Chloe, she got off the bed. I have something to tell you, sis, Lara says. What is it? Chloe asks. I want to challenge you to a duel, Lara says with a serious look on her face. It seems you have been thinking about this for a minute. Very well, I accept the, du the duel. Nothing lethal. First one to lose their shield, lose their shield loses. Is that fair, Chloe says and asks. Fair enough, Lara says. You called Miss Ormora and ask if a trading field is open and let her know what's going on. That's fine, Brandon. Field 7 should be open, Miss Ormora says. Thanks. H have the others on standby, please, just in case something goes wrong. You say, very well. I hope Lara can prove herself this time, Miss Ormora says before hanging up. You tell the others what Miss Ormora said. You couldn't help but wonder what Miss Ormora meant by prove herself this time. Guess you will find out in the match, you thought. Everyone makes their way to the field. Uh, Lara stands on one side while Chloe stands on the other side. On the count of three, the match begins. Before Lara can do anything, everyone's scenery changes around them. Chloe has the ability to cause illusions in, using the air around people. It's not harmful to you. It just messes with your mind as to what you are seeing. Katatanashi explains while everyone watches the match. So what you're saying is saying she can make her darkest fears seem like they are real, you ask. Yes, she has the ability to see what your fears and desires are and can use them against you. She, uh, Even though even I wouldn't stand a chance against her. Just remember, though, Lara isn't as normal as she seems. Yes, she has fears and desires, but she also has the ability to perceive things differently than what you could imagine. Because Lara has been experimented on, she can see, see through certain things. As long as she doesn't let her emotions get in the way, she has a fighting chance, she, uh, Tatanashi says. Everyone was listening to Tatanashi's words while watching the match, and you could see the scared looks they had on their faces. Everyone knew that they let their emotions get to them a lot. You were just thinking about what could be used against you when all of your all of a sudden you see Lars Cannon shoot a beam bigger than any that anyone has seen before. The beam hit the ground, causing a cloud of dust breaking the illusion. When the dust cleared, there was a huge crater in the ground, and Lara was in front of Chloe already using a shield piercer. Lara swung, but Chloe seemed to anticipate the attack and dodged it just in time. Chloe thought she had gotten free when all of a sudden Lara launched a, launched a kick, hitting Chloe hard enough to send her slamming into slamming straight into the wall of the arena. Lara used her ignition boost and hit Chloe dead on with her shield piercer, causing Chloe's shield to deplete the rest of the way. The match was called, and in the in speakers announcing Lara as the victor of the match, all of a sudden Lara sp uh, collapsed unconscious. We have a medical team here now, you hear Ichika announce into his IS band. Chapter 13. Family, mean, family means everything. Medical staff swarmed the field in seconds of Ichika calling them in. They helped Lara, lifted Lara onto a stretcher and carried her to the medical bay area. Everyone followed and watched as they went to work as they went to work on Lara. They must have found something very wrong during her scans because they started perform started operating and performing surgery on her. You could look over over look over to see that tears were streaming down Chloe's face. You just stared straight at Lara and wouldn't look away. You turned back and seen see them make a cut on Lara's chest. You couldn't bear to watch it anymore any longer. Charlotte started opening her mouth to say something until she saw your face. You didn't realize that tears had formed and started streaming down your face. You turned to walk out of the room. Cecilia was going to stop you until Ichika put his arm out and shook his head no at her. You walk out of the room and head to your own room. You eventually reach your room with people moving out of your way when they saw. You could hear the whispers as you passed by, but ignored them all. You opened your door, leaned to your, your bed, and sat down there to think. You were so lost in your thoughts that you didn't 
know when know when Chloe had entered the room. Can we talk? Chloe asked. Sure, you said with a depressed voice. Let's go to the roof to talk, Chloe said. You got up and followed her to the roof. People stared at both of you as you walked by. Once you were on the roof, both were on the roof of the building, Chloe started to talk. I'm scared of losing her. She pushed herself too hard this time um, around. I'm glad that she was able to beat me finally, but I don't want to hurt her to hurt herself over it. I'm, ju I'm just trying to be the sister that I should have been in the beginning, Chloe said. It was a few minutes before he responded. What did they do to her, you asked. They added a nanobot to her body to enhance her ability to use an IES unit. That is why she has an eye that was implanted into her body, Chloe says. Have you ever thought about, getting, about wanting event range against someone in your life, you ask? Yes, for what they did to her and me, Chloe says. I promise I will get revenge for your sister, you say. How about we do it together, Chloe asks. Fine by me. Let's fill the others and Miss Orimore in our plans. I don't want to hide anything from them, you say. Agreed, Chloe says. With that, you both head back to, to, head back to fill, out, fill everyone in on yours and Chloe's plan. Chapter 14, Pre prepping, preparing, Prepping an Attack. You and Chloe both reach the medical bay and immediately call everyone, even Miss Orimura, to gather around. Miss Yamada even joined the group. Everyone, once After everyone was gathered, you decide to let them know of yours and Chloe's decision. Chloe and I have gathered everyone here to announce our plans. We are going to attack the lives that did this to Chloe and Lara. We aren't asking for permission. This is something we must do. We accept the punishment for our actions, but we must get our revenge for this, you say to everyone. I have your back, and I'm sure everyone here does. Just let us know when we move out, Ichigo says. I will pull some strings and get you into Germany safely. I will I will help where I can, and Miss Yamada will be going out, going with you since she is an experienced pilot and fighter, Miss Orimura says. You, uh, you'll all go and sit down in a meeting room. To your surprise, Ichigo's sister, Madoka, shows up, showed up out of the blue. Finally, some action. I can use a dose of mayhem, Madoka says, smirking. You hate to admit it, but if there's one person that's scared to hell of you, it's Madoka. She had a passion for violence that was uncanny and abnormal for a person. You explain the operation carefully after getting support word back from Germany. You would land on a military field that was prepared to help with fire support to get you guys into the lab area. That had done unspeakable things to your girlfriend. After the briefing, the intercom came on, asking everyone to report to the medical bay. Everyone raced, raced to the medical bay, and upon reaching it, it saw that uh, reaching it saw that Lara was awake. She seemed, to be, she seemed to be patiently waiting for everyone. Once everyone was there, you gave Lara a rundown of what was going on. I want to go with you all. I know the lab inside and out for the in, inside and out for the layout being there for so long. Lara said, "Miss Yamada was against it until Miss Oromoto said that it'd be good to have someone that knew the layout and would know where to attack, and how to get out if something went wrong." Uh, once everyone everything was decided, everyone went back went to the docking bay for the machines, and the maintenance crew showed up to work on preparing preparing prepping everything. On the IES units. It took almost an hour to make sure everything was installed and working properly. Once the machine were ready to go, everyone got on the machines and took off to end up docking on the carrier ship that would be taking them to Germany. The trip uh, would definitely take some time, so everyone prepared, prepped for a plan on attacking as Lara drew out the facility and, and labeled key vital points to hit. Once After the plans were drawn out and everyone knew what the tasks were, they headed to bed to get some sleep while waiting for the rest of the trip to Germany. Uh, chapter 15. Girls are confusing. Due to the lack of beds on the carrier, everyone had to share beds. Since it was weird for two guys to share a bed, you got stuck with the girls pushing Lara on, to, on to sh pushing Lara on to share the bed with you. You ended up waking up. You ended up. You ended up waking up with Lara nestled into your side and your arm around her. Since you couldn't move your arm to her due to her laying on it, you just hoped she didn't wake up and hit you for it. Somehow, Chloe also crawled into bed, and sleeping on your other side. You're starting to sweat until Hokey walked in. She started laughing as you went and shook the, both the girls awake. Lara woke up, woke up slowly and noticed she was calling up next to you. She sat up and blushing and whispered an apology when you grabbed her and hugged her. She was taken by surprise, but when it wore off, she hugged you back. Chloe hugged your waist, not wanting to wake up until she realized what was going on. She immediately jumped out of the bed. Everyone immediately went to get dressed and went and and get dressed and ready for the landing of the boat. Uh, once the boat had landed, everyone got their stuff and IS units ready to disembark from uh, disembark off the ship. You were standing foot for the first time in Germany. What you didn't expect was a squad of women there to greet you. Welcome back, Captain Bodwig, said the lead said, said the squad leader, a woman with short black hair. It's good to be back on familiar territory, Commander Laura said with a smirk. 
Laura immediately went around inspecting the squad, giving advice and helping the girls out with making sure everything was in order before calling for a briefing. Once the briefing started, you noticed most of the girls were listening, but they're all pay also paying attention to you, too. You were sure it was due to you being the second male to ever pilot an IES unit. After... After all, it was rare. It was a rare thing for a male to be an IES pilot. Once the debriefing was done, the squad started moving out to prep, prep, prep for the battle. The battle, the plan was to attack during the night, and these girls showed their loyalty to Lara like their life depended on it. Now it was waiting time until everyone was set and the night had fallen. Lara had drawn out the schematics for the grounds of the facility and in each building. You just hoped no one got hurt in the attack, but considering you were the weakest link, you had to be the most careful out of everybody. Chapter 16, The Battle uh, Everyone waited nearby the facility until it was completely pitch black out as to have cover by the night sky. Once everyone got in their positions, the squad leader called Clarissa, uh, called in the artillery, um, and had them fire at the facility's motor club to disable their vehicles. Once the bombs hit, you heard Laura call to destroy the reactors to knock out their power. Laura and Cecilia sniped out two of the reactors and hit them dead on while Todd and Asha used her can to hit a third, leaving Rain and Charlotte to take out the last one while you played defense, taking out the ground troops to prevent them from using a counter from using a counter assault. It took less than seven minutes to knock out all four reactors, leaving the facility to use their backup generators to have the emergency lights on in the facility. The facility came back on with minimal power, and Chloe, Lara, and you strike a hole in the wall to the building where the backup generators were. Once in the generating room, you manifest a sword as your primary IDS unit's weapon and strike the generators one by one, knocking out their emergency power and making the facility go completely dark once again. Everyone acts their infrared sensors on their IS units and start making their way into the core of the labs. Lara was calling out the shot calling out the shots and making sure nobody got hurt. Surprisingly, the operation went, was going smoothly. The main part of knocking out their eyes went just fine. The squad member was really was doing a really good job holding the enemy tro troops at bay. The black-haired squadron had the upper hand on a defensive side, keeping troops from getting into the main entrances of the facility. Once everyone got down to the main labs, uh, Lars st had started having everyone target the machines that ran the testing for IS units, taking out the main machines first and then going after the auxiliary machines. It took roughly about 20 minutes to destroy the lab completely. Once the all the machines were destroyed, Lara called out shots to destroy the medical labs, leaving the enemies wounded with nowhere to go to heal, que heal quickly. After the medical labs were taken out, they went after the supply rooms, taking out the rest of the medical supplies and part of their weaponry. Once... Once the supply rooms were taken out, Lara had the team take out the bunkers. Unfortunately, the team actually had to kill people, which weighed heavily on everyone because they wanted to do this without casualties. But new war came with a hefty price. Once the bunkers were leveled out in the, in the breed, the last target was the armory. Ichika was about to charge the door of the armory to break it down when he got shot in the chest. Lara saw the guy, or Charlotte saw the guy who shot Ichika and killed him with a, one round straight through the heart, making the guy wheel, wheel head over heels and come to a complete stop on the ground dead. Charlotte had tears in her eyes knowing she had just took someone's life, but the pure hatred of them actually trying to kill everyone was enough to keep her going with the same, a sane mind. Cecilia called in a medical for a med, in, in for medical with Clarissa, leading the medical team to get Ichika out of there and get help. Fortunately, uh, fortunately, there was only one injury so far, and everyone kept going, uh, with Tatanashi using a water crystal to blow up the buildings one by one until the enemy's army was completely destroyed, causing the enemy to retreat. Once the enemy had retreated, the Black Hair Squadron was able to get each guy on a helicopter back to base to get him medical help. Everyone started to clear the area and get out of and get out of the enemy's territory now that the mission was complete. It took everyone about an hour to get back to base. Lara and Chloe stayed by her side as the rest of the girls went in to check on, on how Ichika was doing. And within the hour, the head doctor came out saying that Ichika would be fine and nothing vital was hit. Everyone was severely lucky the plan went on, went on with only one of them getting hurt in the whole operation. Now it was a waiting game until they cleared Ichika to be able to leave. Good thing you're on a military Chapter base 17, where the enemy didn't dare of a brand try new to beginning. Retaliate. You wake up and try to move until you feel something under the covers. You lift up the cov lift the covers and see Lara sitting up asking if it's morning already. She turns towards you and kisses you all of a sudden. You reach up and wrap your arms around her, trying to pull her closer until you hear someone clear her throat. You both pull instantly apart and turn towards the door to see Chloe standing there. 
It seems I should have come back later. You two seem to be doing well together, Chloe says before turning and leaving. Well, I suppose we should get ready go, get ready, and see how Ichigo's doing since he got shot, you say, turning your head from embarrassment. Let's go, Lara says while getting her uniform on. Once you were both dressed, you both made your way, make your way out of the room towards the infirmary. Everyone is watching the two of you, knowing that the team took out a, highly def a high defended laboratory. You smirked while walking by, knowing that even the upperclassmen were giving you respect for your actions in combat. It took a minute before, because of the crowded hallways, but eventually you both reached the infirmary to see each go away, awake and singing with the bandages around him to help heal the gunshot wound. It was pretty gruesome to see bandages so blood soaked through. How you feeling, man? You asked Ichika. All good, just four stitches and done pulling out the bullet, which hurt like hell. Ichika said, light, slightly patting his side to prove that it wasn't as bad as it seemed. Good to know for future reference if it ever happens, you say. It better not happen to my brides, Laura says well, loudly while blushing. Everyone turns to Laura in surprise because she basically claimed you in front of everyone, sealing the relationship like you wanted. Now it's official. Miss Orimura walked in hearing everything. Do I need to plan a wedding, Miss Orimura asked. It shocked everyone that Miss Orimura would suggest a thing, such a thing. Stranger things have happened. Just one thing, you two. No babies. This is an academy after all, and I, can, I won't stand for raising kids when you both are still attending, Miss Orimura says. I will marry her if that is what she wishes, you say as you turn to Laura. So my question is, do you two want to get married? Miss Horimura asked both you and Lara. You slightly hear L Lara say yes. You also say yes. Then it's settled. I will make preparations for it. But just remember my rules, you two. No babies, Miss Horimura says. Chapter 18. Preparing for a wedding. Prepping for a wedding. Excuse me. After Miss Ormore claimed she would have the wedding on the grounds of the academy, everyone in the room started talking about what to wear for the wedding. It was interesting because I, each of the girls except Laura were deciding to wear a traditional dress from their nation for the wedding. Laura cleared her throat so everyone was paying attention to her. All the girls here will be bridesmaid. Each girl will be on Brandon's side. How does that sound for everyone, Laura said and asked. They all agreed to it. Each girl laid back down as a nurse came in to change his bandages. Once the bandages were removed, Reen got the privilege of cleaning the area of blood since it didn't seem to bother her. To everyone's surprise, she was quite gentle and had the area cleaned really well. Ichika seemed to be right. It, it, his wound wasn't that bad. Reen, who apparently knew quite a bit about first aid, helped the nurse with putting new band-aids bandages on. She, had, she made Ichika stay laying down and put a cool rag on his head. You could sweet, see the sweat on his forehead from it. Chloe came up beside. I don't know too much about you, but thank you for being here for my sister. I hope one day we can all be a family. I hurt Laura badly, and I just hope I can earn her trust, Chloe said. You'll pull you pull Laura, uh, Chloe into a hug. You'll be my sister-in-law. I already consider your family along with everyone else here. Why don't you help me and Laura with getting stuff for the wedding? Here's a picture of the ring that I want for her. Can you help me by pick, going and picking it up, you say and ask? Uh... I will have it to you as soon as possible, Chloe says. You smile as soon as Chloe turns to take off and go get the ring. As soon as everyone was ready, they went off to get the uniforms made while you and Lara were separated for getting your tux and her getting her dress for the wedding. It was going to be a very long day. It was dark out already by the time you got back to the dorm. You take your key out and open the door to your room and find both Chloe and Lara there. You notice that Chloe had two suitcases with her. What is going on here, you ask? It's set up that you and Lara will be sharing one bed, so... Laura, so Miss Orimar decided to have me move in here and take the other bed. Um, if you two ever need alone time, just let me know. I tend to stay up all night, so I can always give you guys space when you want it. Plus, I can help you guys with your classwork since I am out of school already. I have vast, vast knowledge about each of yours, your guys' IS units, so I also would know how to help you with them, Chloe said while bowing. Gotcha. I think we should get some sleep, considering tomorrow is going to be a long, eventful day for everyone. I'm just glad I'm getting married to such a beautiful girl and hope to have a wonderful life, you say. Chloe unpacked her things while you and Lara slid the visor out and got changed for bed. Chloe uh, uh, got changed. Once everyone was dressed for bed, Chloe slid the visor back into the wall and everyone climbed to bed. Reached over and hit the switch for the lights while Lara curled up next to you. It, t it, it didn't take long before everyone was fast asleep. Uh, I think this is the last chapter. Yep, last chapter. Uh, <clears throat> chapter 19, The Wedding and the Future. You are woken to the door of the room opening. You look towards 
uh, at the door and see the other girls there. Reen walks over to the bed and pulls the covers back, revealing Lara under the sheets curled t up tight against you. Reen gently shakes Lara until she wakes up. Come on, sleepy. It's time to get up and follow us. Girls, get ready and dress. While Reen was getting Lara up, Ichika walked in. You ready to get things started, man? Ichika asked you. Sure thing, he said, getting up and putting basic clothes on until you get to the room to put on the tuxedo for your wedding. You watch Lara go with the other girls to go get her wedding dress on. Since Lara wasn't into fashion, the other girls had helped pick out the dress for Lara, and you haven't seen it yet. You go with Ichika to a changing room off the, off the side of the biggest arena field and get dressed. You smooth out the tie and make sure it wasn't good. It was good and check the suit to make sure there wasn't any wrinkles in it. You wanted to look your best for one of the best days in your life. There was still much to come. Meanwhile, Laura was in the changing room on the other side of the arena. She was getting to dress on while the other girls were making sure the makeup and hair was done. The hair, makeup and hair was done right. It took a while for Laura to have everything done and ready, and she she barely had any makeup done because she didn't care for it. Her hair made her look made her look angelic like in the dress. It was a traditional white color with golden velvet trim on it. It was a little bit shorter than most wedding dresses, but it was uh, what she wanted. She wasn't nervous. She knew she was marrying someone that would take care of her and treat her right. She smiled as Miss or Moore's voice came on over the intercom system, telling everyone to get seated, since the entire school was attending along with some guests. The seating was using the entire arena seats for it. Lara had a smile on her face as she got into the beginning position for the wedding. Back to you in the start of things. You got into position as things were as things were wrapping up. It was like five minutes later. It was like five minutes later, and the wedding music for the wedding started. You made your way out towards the platform, seeing everyone in the seats watching. You couldn't help but think that your wedding was going to be the biggest wedding in history. You eventually reached the platform and ste step up to where Miss Yamato was standing. Once you reached your place, the music shifted, and Lara walked out with Tabane Tab by her side. Tabane was the one that would be giving your ha Lara's hand in marriage. Lara made her way towards the platform while everyone watched intent uh, while everyone with everyone watching intensely. Uh, once Lara made it to the platform, Tabane kissed Lara on the cheek and told her good luck, and then went to go take her seat. Once Tabane was seated, Miss Yamada cleared her throat. "Do you, Brandon Knapp, take this woman to be your wife?" Miss Yamada asked. "You turned towards Lara. I do. I do plan on taking care of you. I do. I plan on taking care of you as long for as long as I live." I wish to have a family with you one day and show the world that I am the luckiest man in history, you say out loud. Miss Yamada turns towards Laura. And do you take this man to be your husband, Miss Yamada asks. I do. I plan on being the best bride to you and hope also and hope to also have a family together one day, Laura says. You may now kiss the bride, Miss Yamada says. You pull Laura towards you and kiss her deeply as the arena erupts into loud cheering from all around. You both were extremely happy that a dream came true. Years later, you're in the middle of teaching class that had about five boys in it, with the rest being girls. When a girl with platinum blonde hair her blonde, platinum blonde hair raised her hand. Yes, Madeline, do you have a question? You ask. Yes, Father, I do. In our history books, it teaches us that Professor Orimura and you were the first two males to ever control an IES unit. Is the statement in the book true? She asked. Yes, that is true. Your god uncle and me were the first two. We don't know why it specifically happened that way. It is still unclear why an IS unit chooses a person. The only theory we came up can come up with is that the IS unit has an intelligence of its own. No facts have been discovered to prove this theory. Hoki Shinonano did try to decide to follow in her sister's footsteps and take over for Professor Tabane and the research and development of the IS unit. As you know, my unit was a fourth generation to Ichika's what uh, to Ichika's what who uh, was a third generation. However, our units have adaptability to where they can be upgraded and even compete with the next six, new six generations of IS units. I'm glad you asked such a question, you answered. You couldn't help but smile knowing your, that your daughter is going to be a brilliant scientist when it comes to the IS unit. And so that is it for this story. I definitely do have other ones I'm going to be reading. But yeah, that's the end of that's it for this story. And I hope you all enjoyed it and uh, hope you all continue to enjoy my other reading.